it's actually really good to to see you to talk to you finally yeah like, I, know, I know you've been in the space uh before i did i wasn't actually aware of that until i started my channel and mm. and then i was i was searching for you and i realized you had your issues with youtube um mm. but yeah anyways i i hear about you a lot and honestly like i watched some of your uh videos uh in your course and obviously you know i reviewed some of your products which i think a lot of them are excellent uh so uh this interview is actually requested by my subscribers like they were they wanted to hear your take on many different things uh, i don't know if you're up to date with the latest like pe community they have their own philosophies on how things should go and they're pretty um, strict with their philosophies. They're not really uh, accepting other point of views uh, much. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm honestly also very curious to hear your take on it. Uh, first of all, I couldn't really uh, find what was your starting stats and what, what, how much you gained and how long did it take you to gain those gains? I'm unfortunately in one of those boats where I didn't take a ruled out measurement, uh, but 16 centimeters was, I remember my bone pressed erect length yeah. uh, and eventually got to 19.75. So it's nothing uh, astronomical um, mm -hmm. out of this world. It, it is actually like, it, it's, uh, well, how, how much is that in inches? That's like almost a couple of inches, a bit less. A little less than a couple of inches, but... I mean, relative to these massive claims that I'm not even too sure how real they are, I seem to be one of few, um, you being uh, one of those others as well, that, you know, aren't shameful about putting anything out there like uncensored or anything. Like I just, I essentially built a brand that I wish I had when I started, when it came down to content coaching uh, and products. Like I just built everything the way that I would absolutely love it. And yeah. I mean, nothing's imperfect. Yeah. Um, I've tried to iterate and improve uh, as much as I can by listening to not only myself, but obviously my community as well, which has been amazing. Um, girth, I went from 14.5 to 16.25 centimeters. Sorry for the, the centimeters. I know that we've got a lot of... Yeah, that's fine. We're going to edit them and put them in uh, inches on the screen for the US audience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I think one of your questions was, um, how did I start, wasn't it? So yeah, how how did you start? How did you get into PE and why? Yeah, well, I think I got my first penis pump at around 16, but I, I think it was before that I realized that I couldn't really control myself when it came to stamina. Yeah. Um, so stamina was actually something that I struggled with initially. And obviously as any of us do, good old uh, Google comes in handy. So we go on to the, the web search up what we can do for solutions and i came across the term male enhancement which is obviously the umbrella term for hardness stamina size and i always believed that you know size was just the thing that you're born with that's it like you have it for the rest right. of your life uh, and then i came across all these techniques that claim to you know improve size mind you 16 centimeter i was actually content like i was i was pretty happy with that right. um i think my first uh, interaction with comparison was probably porn but even then i mean 16 centimeters it's not that bad it's actually above average in most yeah. places yeah so i mean I, I was pretty content um but then i thought like i've always been one guy that loves personal development improving in any which way that i can and i thought like how cool would that be uh if anything i liked the challenge of it all i mean i was on and off for yeah, probably the past 15 years, I got my first penis pump, 16. Uh, honestly, ended up like a fucking marshmallow. That, yeah. scared, that scared the shit out of me. So I put I put that away. Like I think I literally just threw it in the bin, and I'm like, never again. Um, probably a couple of years went by, um, and my sexual activity increased, and I just had this urge to uh, not only improve myself but improve the pleasure for you know, both parties. So I thought maybe size was the way to go. So uh, got back into the space, got under the forums, um, then just started like trying one thing after another. But the information out there, I think, was so singular. Like this one product is, you know, the bee's knees, try this thing or you know, that's the best product. And what was it uh, back then? I'm curious because I, I also kind of looked into 
the topic, I'd say probably 12, 13, 14 years ago. I can't exactly mm -hmm. remember. Uh, but what was like the product that was mostly in the face? Like for me, I remember it was like fast size now. I don't know if you remember this brand that got shut down eventually. One of the first stretchers that um, was out there. Uh, so what was like when you did your research, what was it like that? I think it was Jez, Jez Extender, Compression Extender. So Right. Those uh, those were one of the like size genetics and Jez Extender and Male Age. It's basically one company uh, yeah. with, with like different names, basically. When I found that out, that kind of annoyed me a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but no, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So I went from that to, uh, I think I kind of fell for the marketing scheme. They don't necessarily um, tell you up front that they're the same company. They yeah. just advertise like it's competing against each other, maybe different um, demographic, but who knows. Uh, went from that to male edge. Um, and then eventually, like years later, I found my way to, I don't know how long LG Hanger has been around, but I found them um, maybe a year or so prior to actually starting the brand mm -hmm. about that. Man, it's been so long now. Um, and then I just, yeah, found my way to, I guess, the more nuanced devices that are less common is the compression uh, extender, for example, is like one of the most typical uh, devices sold. Most companies like the big conglomerate guys, yeah. um, you know, they're usually FDA approved, CE approved or whatever. Um, yeah, I have something to say about that as well. But yeah. yeah, I don't know if it actually makes any sense. Like, what, like, how is FDA approved? Like, makes any difference? I think I think it's just like big budget companies trying to add another badge on their website, and like the average person has no idea what FDA means in terms of like stretchers. Mm -hmm. Does it even say anything or not? Like. <laughs> It's a governing body that you can put a badge on your website and have a bit more credibility. I think it's yet another marketing ploy because um, I'm definitely looking at getting it done. Um, but I just don't know. One of your questions um, got me to touch on this point just as a note. Um, I don't know how they can actually recommend, for example, Jazz Extender, Mail Edge, Size Genetics, same company. Uh, they're FDA approved, sure. But it's more of a safety governing body, you would think. And the fact that they can recommend or advise customers to use their device while sleeping or in public. Yeah. Um, one of your questions was, do you think the compression extenders are uh, dangerous? In that case, yes. With that advice, yes. Um, and I think what makes them more dangerous or more of a typical dangerous method is because it's so well known uh, so it, the more known it is, the more people are going to use it, the more chance that there is of injuries, risks of injuries. Um, and especially when they've been given this false expectation that you can wear it to sleep, like that's yeah. dangerous device. Yeah, it's super dangerous. And especially the fact that, I mean, their devices are kind of compression, right? Because they basically squeeze on the penis, they block the blood. I could mm -hmm. never... Fortunately for me, I could never manage to wear those devices uh, because I got them early on and I was like, my skin was getting pinched in the, like between the plastic and the rubber. And I was like, there's no way I could wear those devices. And, and I like, it's just common sense to realize that, you know, you kind of block the blood. Like imagine sitting on your arm for the whole night, like for eight hours straight. Can't yeah. be good for you, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I I have no idea how they actually getting away with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing, honestly. I think because because I looked into it myself and uh, what the criteria was or what I needed to do to get my products registered, uh, because I do um, hope to get into the medical space eventually, and that is a minimum requirement. Yeah, uh, a lot of guys that go through uh, what's called prostatectomy, prostate surgery, and they get it removed. Right. Uh, because there's a lot of trauma down there, uh, there can be a lot of uh, retraction and some guys actually lose a lot of size. Lose a lot of size, yeah. Some guys actually keep their function, which is awesome, but unfortunately there are a lot of guys that lose their function altogether. But the guys that actually keep their function, um, I'm hoping to be able to you know, offer our devices so that they can at least keep their size as well. I mean, I can't imagine losing your function. Um, yeah, just the dignity to go out the fucking window, but yeah, hopefully you know, be able to ma uh, maintain 
as much of it as as they can it would be good so i wanted to ask you um why did you start making your own devices did you feel like there was some sort of lack in the market or what was it yeah so after trying literally like at the time every product on the market um i'm sure you probably went through this yourself as well i just end up making uh like Frankenstein products, right, like exactly, yeah, yeah. Bit of that, bit of that, like you know, like this feature of that product. Um, I started my YouTube channel, and I actually started recommending certain things, showing what I was doing, what worked for me. Uh, and then it got to the point where I started uh, what's it called Patreon, mm -hmm. um, that actually enabled me to make more videos. I don't know if that's something you're doing at the moment, but um, no, yeah, I'm using the OnlyFans, which is basically the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it just allowed me to step away from what I was doing at the time to make money um, just so I can focus on you know, providing even more information. But um, I got to the point where I just got tired of re or annoyed at recommending three different products for the one outcome. Right. Um, so it was frustrating for me because I, I know how painful it was to spend so much money and still have not the best thing or what I thought. Yeah. Um, so that combined like the frustration combined with my passion for industrial design um if i didn't get the fitness bug which you know led me to start my own gym and uh fitness endeavors i probably would have gotten into product design or uh industrial design um so yeah that frustration of not having you know the best product on the market uh and that passion for designing my own thing i just got a couple of engineers on board and they helped me uh pretty much put together what i thought would be a much better product Mind you, that was right after I'd made suggestions to the current companies and brands just to see, you know, if they'd actually come out with um Yeah, it's, it's funny. I actually did the exact same thing. I reached out and I'm like, look, you have a good product. Like, I like this about it, but you haven't updated the body of the device, the base of the device, like the traction system, like this and that. Like, you can change this, make it better. And they're like, no, sorry, like, it's too much work. Like, this is working, you know. And and if you look at companies, it, it really boggles my mind. Like, like, they've been in the business for over two decades, right? Like, we're talking about Jess Extender, or whatever, Penny Master, all those. Mm -hmm. And the devices are still the same. Like, they haven't, they haven't, you know, then they're making shit ton of money. They're making millions a month and they haven't thought, you know what, maybe it's time to kind of upgrade the design. And I'm like, like, why not? Like, what, like you have all the budget, you have all the engineers, you have all the resources and it comes down to people like me and you to kind of step up and be like, well, the market is shit. Let's do something about it and let's, let's create something superior. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I can't figure out why wouldn't they update the device. I mean, if I was a business owner, I'd expect competition to start coming in. Like if, if you're not catching up to the latest and greatest, then competition is going to mm -hmm. start creeping in and you're just going to be left behind. But my guess is they price their, uh, devices so high and the, their margins are so high. Cause like, if you got any of their devices, you realize that it probably costs like 15 bucks to make or something like that or 20 bucks because i'm in you know industry as well and I, I know the cost of things and so they're charging like 350 bucks they're making like a thousand margin and then they're spending all the rest of this money on marketing and they basically kick everyone else out of the market by just overspending like outspending them and and that's how they maintain you know selling a subpar device for so long without ever updating it. I will admit, I mean, business model, like, touche, like, fine. Yeah, no, it's a great business model. In terms of making money, it's yeah. great. It's great. And they, they've been doing that successfully for 20 years, which is, you know, for any business to stay in business for so long, I mean, it's very impressive, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. But anyways, so uh, are, have you stop doing PE or are you still uh, stretching daily? No, so I, I definitely stopped uh, my daily approach. Um, anytime I get back into wearing any devices, it's most likely for prototyping purposes. Yeah. You know, editing, I'll get some feedback from my customers, see how I can make things better. Um, I'll never come out with a product unless I've you know thoroughly tried it. 
And even though I don't try to the extent of getting results, I've got enough experience now that I know what a product needs to be comfortable, effective. <clears throat> um, and what I'm really leaning to is safety. Like I really want to keep that at the forefront of mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the past, yeah, the past two, two years, years have been, been very, very sporadic. sporadic. Um, um, I, think I think just getting, just getting to, to my size, size for me personally, personally I just, I just think, think that, that I've lost my drive because, because I'm satisfied, satisfied with where I am, I am to be totally to honest. And I'm sure, I'm sure you'll agree, agree that this is no easy journey. journey. Like, like there's, there's, there's no dabbling. dabbling. Like you like really you need, need to be in it in to it. actually yeah. get results. Um, so it's either all or nothing. Like you, you're not going to do a little bit here, a little bit there, like. And get so. results. Yeah. You need to be super consistent and debug things and realize what's working, change things around. Uh, mm. and, and yeah, yeah, another thing I realized, I don't know what's your take on it, but uh, different methods work for different people. So there, there, there are people that I'm seeing, they're getting like crazy results by doing high tension stretching for a short period of time. And there's mm -hmm. other people that they need that six to eight hours per day at a low tension, kind of an all day stretcher for them to kind of gain results. So what, what's your take on this? Like have, from your experience, like have you seen... Mm -hmm. Uh, one method that works for everybody or is it that people need to experiment with different methods see which one works yeah that really fascinates me i think the same can be said for literally anything in life like you know whether it's business whether it's fitness um i think there's always going to be something that works for most people you know the yeah. average bell curve yeah um then maybe some other methods that work like outliers uh and aren't necessarily the norm but my approach has kind of led me to this middle ground of actually utilizing both. So um, if you've been on my site recently, I've you know, got a graph. I actually say that we need to use both for the most effectiveness and safety. Yeah. I just think if you do go for the higher intensity for shorter periods of time, you can make it work with a very strategic plan. Um, my, I guess, cardinal rule is progressive overload. Whether you use the compression hanger, whether you use the all-day stretcher only, um, you can get either to work to a certain point. Um, yeah. But I think both require progressive overload. But I came to the realization for me and what's worked best for me is actually utilizing the best of both worlds. So utilizing something that requires your you know, uh, complete focus, attention, and privacy, which is you know, potentially higher intensity, uh, lower time, which is compression, uh, compression extending, and then combine it for mostly relaxation purposes um, and healing purposes, which is the all-day stretcher, passive healing sleeve, uh, for longer periods of time, um, but much lower intensity. So I definitely think it's a mixture of both. Um, I'd almost, I'd really like to ask the people that are getting the results with heavier hanging, whether it's going to be sustainable and can it actually get them to uh their end goal like have they actually gotten to their end goal or have they seen results in the short term and then they stop because i think that's possible yeah uh, especially if they don't uh, incorporate you know any progressive overload i really think like i've hung heavy before one of your questions i think was um how heavy have i hung hung um and i think i've you know experimented with up to 12 kilos no wow. one no one go and do this like so unnecessary um but I reckon I gained in it like scared shitless. Like I was kind of worried, but I just wanted to see like, you know, how far I'd be able to push myself. Um, mind you, this was like years of condition conditioning, like already done. So don't just go and you know hang heavy weight for the sake of hanging heavy weight. Um, but I noticed like half a centimeter. Uh, but what I also think happened is I made myself uh plateau completely, like I just could not gain for such a substantial amount of time after that um to the point where i just thought like i'm not getting anywhere i'm just going to take a break uh you know you get to that point where you feel like you're kind of going insane like you're not getting anything yeah. um, out of it so i just stopped um and lo and behold i think my tissues relaxed eventually and then i felt like i could actually start getting results again um when i got my sanity back as well so i do think it makes a difference but i think from that what I came to realize is it's not necessarily the total volume, it's not the weight, it's not the time that you put in, but it's the progressive nature of not allowing your tissues to get used to the weight. 
So I think that's why uh, eventually, you know, all day stretching at such a low intensity, if you do the same thing every day, it's eventually just going to plateau. Right. Um, many people just think about, you know, the tunica is the main tissue or the suspensory ligament is the main tissue. Sure, it's all connective tissue, but we've also got such an important tissue down there, which is the fascia. Yeah. And it's so interactive, uh, so reactive to the rest of the body, not only locally, but to uh, systemically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, many people like just kind of, you know, don't even think about this tissue. So if you go to the gym, you smash your muscles, that tight feeling that you get in the gym is yeah. your fascia protecting the muscles so it can't incur any further damage, it can't be torn. Um, that same tissue is in and around literally every tissue of your body, including blood vessels, everything, including mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. So this is, from my opinion, what happens when you hang or you do any session. Um, the heavier you do it, the more retraction you get. Most people call it the turtling effect. It's your fascia literally protecting your organ for procreation. Like, you know, right. a penis is extremely important. Um, so a way to get around this is essentially to not push it to a point. Like I've made a whole video series on this. I go into massive depth. I don't know if you've checked it out. I did actually. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my, my question is regarding, so you don't believe that if somebody is stretching for like, say seven pounds an hour a day for like a prolonged period of time, you don't think that's a good strategy. You think they should be increasing either time or uh, weight or tension, yeah? If it's the exact same for like a you know period of three months, if you want to try it, go for it. Yeah. Um, I've just found from my personal experience, so my opinion um, that that consist the consistency is good, yeah. Um, but I believe it's the progressiveness where you're not triggering the tissue to react and like to protect itself because the fascia has the same tensile strength as steel like you're really not going to win sure you can, you can tear it if you you know push it like too far too quick yeah but the goal is to we also have to remember it, it holds memory as well so it kind of keeps track of like what happened um any further stress the tighter it gets uh if it relaxes it will eventually relax so we're essentially going with the flow of the body so if we can do it to a point where it doesn't react um out of like a protective mechanism but each day progress enough again so it doesn't react okay. but so we're actually manipulating the tissues yeah we're kind Got of standing this like fine line as we work our way up i wanted to ask you from your experience obviously you had a lot of clients you probably consulted a lot of people um so I mean, that, that, that question, I, I wrote it, but you kind of already answered it, is like, do you think people can gain over one and a half inch? But I guess in your case, you already did that. But my point is, my question is like, how many people did you see gain this amount? And probably what was the most gains you've ever seen one of your clients achieve? Well, none with actual photos. I mean, a few, few with photos, but... I think most of it was written. Not many people are willing to actually send photos in, uh, which I think some people even are surprised that we don't have more before and after testimonials and yeah. reviews. Um, but if you're a guy watching, just think about that for a second. Like this is a very taboo and controversial topic. Like just because you would be willing to share your results doesn't necessarily mean the next guy would be. Like this is a very secretive uh, type of topic to most guys, I think. So for guys to share their results, um, I'm sure you could probably say like, if I got those results, sure, I'd like whip my dick out, take a photo. Yeah. But I don't think most guys are willing to because I've, I've had a lot of guys actually say, like, you know, send me an email saying, thanks again, this amount. Uh, and then I ask them like, this is also why we offer like a reward or an incentive, yeah. basically whatever they've um, supported us with and, uh, spent with us we're willing to give that back to them five times just saying like congratulations like that is awesome um but yeah we've had what four or five as you'd be able to see on our uh, site come back um but even these guys haven't gained uh 1.5 we've had emails come in saying you have but again no photos um but pretty close to the 1.5 when it comes to the 1.5 yeah what i think five inches gain that or a little over do i think i'd be able to gain more than that probably um but i think a good 
or a better question is um, from a point of view of uh, percentage, not inches. A lot of right. guys ask, can I gain two inches? I think it's dependent on the current the starting mass. Starting length, yeah. Which is why percentage is a lot better. So whatever your current stats are now, length and girth, multiply that by 1.3. And I think that is a reasonable goal uh, to get to because, yeah, we are working, as you already know, we are working with the current tissue. Yeah. Um, are we making brand new tissue? Maybe. Like, we actually don't know. Um, but I, I do think that we're definitely stretching a lot of the current tissue that we do have. And that's eventually going to get to a point where, like, it's just not going to get any further, I don't think. Yeah, and in terms of in terms of size, I mean, you obviously not obviously, but you could say. Do you think size matters, and and in which ways? Like, what is the sweet spot for size? You know, because I'm seeing, I'm honestly on the forums, and I'm seeing guys. There are some guys that even came to me, and they're like, "I'm nine inches. I want to get to ten inches," and. I mean, it's funny to you and me. It sounds ridiculous, right? Uh, but guys are truly that obsessed. Like it becomes, I don't think they're even thinking in terms of satisfying a woman because believe mm. it or not, most women are not going to be able to handle such size. It's just going to be painful, unpleasant. They're not going to want to have sex with you, believe it or not. Uh, mm. But so what do you think is the sweet spot for guys to aim for? Firstly, whether or not the, those guys coming to you are at nine inches or not. Uh, yeah, it's uh, open for debate. Um, if they were actually at nine inches and they had sex, your drive to have like gain more, I, I just I would question where that that motive is coming from. Um, I don't know. Has that female or male that you were with had someone that was larger and that you know hurt your ego a little bit and you want even more because of that? There are so many different reasons, um, physically, psychologically, um, that'll be the reason why they actually want more. But yeah, I mean, nine inches, uh, that's massive. I think the reason I've actually lost my drive to actually get more um, was because I've gotten to this point. There was a moment of realization when having sex um, with my partner at the time it took maybe like three or four, three or four moments where in certain positions, for the first time, I'd actually caused pain, and for me, that was such a such a different perspective, and I think a good realization just to check my ego. Like I really think that maybe where my motive was coming from for even more size than where I was at, um, yeah, it was beyond pleasure. Like there was definitely an element um, of ego in there. And to yeah have the this you know, intimate moment go from like pleasure to you know Pain. not pleasure like it just yeah it was such a uh, solid check and I think there is so much more size is important I will say that um, but you know coming from the guy that sells devices for enlargement purposes you know size is not everything like. There is so much more than obviously goes into sex. We all know that. It's one of those, you know, cliche sayings. Most guys that haven't increased the size or maybe they're not starting um, at a point where they're satisfied just yet, it's it's hard to digest that. It, it's probably hard to listen to. You probably want more um, and I'm all for whatever your goal is. But just remember that you could literally feel an inch bigger uh, again, something a bit cliche, but you can literally feel an inch bigger by just putting a little more time into foreplay. Like the amount that goes on with a woman or a man, um, psych psychologically that affects the physical, like sure you can have both. I'm all for having like, you know, all of it size, the works. Um, but I think a lot of guys really focus too heavily on size and they just disregard uh, a lot of the other stuff, especially these guys coming in with uh, erectile dysfunction, maybe they're you know, still suffering with premature ejaculation or something, uh, and they still want more size. Again, I'm all for you having like ticking every box, having every goal, fine. Um, but it's my philosophy that if you can't get hard and you want a big, bigger penis, you're essentially trying to fuel the size like a balloon you can't currently fuel. So why would you want a bigger balloon? Like you need more fuel. Yeah. And to me, uh, like 
sexual performance is such an indicator of a general health and wellness of a guy. Same for females. Like if they, uh, I mean, they're kind of like inversed the other way. Like if they can't get off or if they can't get erect, yes, they can get erect. Um, then something else is going on there as well, psychologically, physically. Uh, but yeah, guys are coming in with erectile dysfunction. That essentially tells me something's going on physically, mentally. Like you need to take care of that first. Plus, uh, I, I don't think a lot of guys realize how important it is to tick these boxes off first, which is why um, I put out a structure, uh, an erection quality, then sexual stamina, then size is in that order of priority, um, which is going to feed into size. I think a lot of guys can't get around this. Um, yeah. But if there is something going on with erection quality, like your penis is almost going to have an element of protection like straight out the gate. Your body is in uh, almost like fight or flight. So I essentially think that humans have two cardinal rules our biology. That's survive and procreate. A lot of guys think if we're alive, then we're surviving, but it's essentially a survival bias. Like we're, we need to get to a stage where we're actually thriving. Um, so we're taking care of you know every every step, nutrition, sleep, movement, and a host of others. Uh, and I think that's going to feed into erection quality. That feeds into sexual stamina, and that's actually going to provide um, the body to get to a point where it's in an optimal state to heal and recover and actually adapt to the stress we're causing for size. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys are actually missing the fundamentals. Like they jump into the size thinking it is the make or break because we as guys, I think we're like very analytical and we think in numbers and we think bigger is definitely better. And they forget about, you know, most of the pleasure women get from sex, it has nothing to do with the physical. It starts with the emotional, with the mental, with foreplay, with everything mm. else. And on top of that, something that I realized is that during my PE journey, I was consuming different kind of drugs, uh, be it nicotine, carton, I made videos about that, stuff that were affecting my erection. And when, you, when you're not able to get hard enough, when your erections are not firm enough, you're not going to be gaining anything. And you can't, even if you were gaining, you, you have no way of measuring the fact that you're gaining. There's simply, it's like a deflated balloon, not enough air getting into it. And mm. you're trying to see how big it can get. Like it's, it's impossible. The only way probably is just to do like flaccid stretched. Um, but still, I mean, if you can't use this length, what's the point? So a lot of guys mm. are not like targeting the fundamentals, I believe. Um, but yeah, so what do you think about rest in terms of growing? How necessary it is for guys to take a break? I think depending on the structure, I mean, give give a go to the consistency that you mentioned before. Like if you want to do the exact same volume, volume being time um, and force, force being pressure or traction. Right. Uh, if you want to stay consistent, do the same thing every day, go for it. Try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, come back to this progressive overload, uh, which is essentially increasing uh, time and force slowly over time, but doing it in a way where you increase time first, maximize your day, and then increase force. Once you do that, uh, and if you agree and see that that uh, does get your results, you'll get to the point where each device and method will essentially max out their safe working limit, mm -hmm. which is what I call it. And at which point there is no, like you probably shouldn't go any further. Like maybe you've maxed out your time. You literally can't use the devices anymore given your time and privacy. And each device I think has a, a safe working force, whether it's pressure or traction uh, equivalent of kilos. Almost set it as a rule. Don't go above this. Once you get there, that's when it's time to have a break uh, and essentially resensitize your tissues so that you can start again um, at a much lower volume where the tissues will be um, actually adapting and reacting to this lower force uh, and volume, should I say. Got it. So, and you think that the rest state or the healing state is better in a elongated state because I, I from some of your videos, I saw you mention using 
the silicon sleeves to keep the penis in an elongated state while you're resting, basically. So you think that this is a better kind of healing method that rather than just not putting on anything and let the penis heal? I do think it's super important. Um, and I really came to realize that when I learned a lot more about the anatomy of the penis and especially when I learned a lot more about the fascia and how complex it is because it adapts to stress locally and systemically, meaning systemically if we stress, like not even anything to do with PE in general, like hanging or extending, if you stress out during the day, you've got a deadline, you've you know, got something that you're um, struggling with, that will essentially affect your penis, let alone PE. Um, yeah. but locally, um, it's also, I fucking lost the question, what did you ask? Uh, if you agree that healing in an elongated state is better than... Um, yeah, because the fascia, I think, can hold memory uh, essentially to the last point of stress, the last volume of stress. I think the last thing you want to do, especially if, let's say, you choose compression hanging, because for a lot of guys, it's going to be really convenient just to compression hang um, in the morning, get it done, get it out of the way. I think that any time um, your penis is in an elongated state, your penis is equating this heavy load, this heavy stress uh, to elongation. There's no time while your penis is elongated unless you're having sex. But I don't think most guys are having sex every single day in this super relaxed and uh, stimulated state. If you are, kudos. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not, uh, you're, I, I feel like there is such benefit of essentially communicating to uh, your penis. You're saying like everything's sweet, like just chill out. It's elongated, but it's not uh, a lot of stress. Right. Um, so if you are all day stretching in combination with compression hanging, I think um, get it to as as elongated as you can, but not actually causing fatigue. So you just want to hold it there so that the tissues essentially bit, um, come to a realization of uh, this is not stress. This is just, you know, our normal, our new state. That's all it is. Got it. Have you have you heard about uh, the new wave of uh, chemical PE? or peptides used for, for PE as well. Uh, some, some guys are basically putting some, I'm not going to say which chemicals on their penis in order for them to increase the, the girth or create another layer that will make their penis, you know, look thicker. Have you looked into that at all? What's your take on it? I've looked into it. I've, uh, you know, experimented with a number of things. Again, I probably won't mention it because I just think that, you don't need it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, not to mention like the side effects, the dangers. Um, and I don't want to sound like I want to burst anyone's bubble to, you know, if they want to go try these things, do it. Like our liability is, <laughs> it's not our liability, uh, your penis. You can do with, with it what you want. But I personally think even before supplements, like chems is one thing, injecting you know, peptides is another thing. Supplements is another thing, and I don't even think guys need supplements if they were to take care of the fundamentals because your body is just so powerful when you give it the right tools, the necessary hardware, um, such as just the proper nutrition, proper sleep, proper movement. These are such boring things that I think a lot of guys don't want to hear it, and they're like, you know, I'm already doing this. I'm already doing that. You could probably do it better. Let, let's let's be totally honest. Um, and I think that's going to give you so much more um, for your time and effort. I, I kind of look at it as the 80-20 rule. And the definition of supplement is to add to yeah. what you're actually doing. And, and the same can be said for peptides um, or you know other uh, chems. But sure, chemicals are a lot more powerful. But I just think the cost-benefit ratio, like – we don't know what a lot of these peptides do. They're still so in, in the infancy stage. Um, you can cross correlate, but you know correlation isn't causation. Just because it says it does one thing in rats doesn't mean it's going to do that thing, and especially for your penis. Like, yeah. let's say you inject a chem um, because it's got properties to you know heal tissues. Why is your body going to just miraculously choose that those chems are going to do that? You know, um, to your penis, like it's. 
if you want to try go for it if it benefits awesome um but definitely not something i recommend i think there's just so much more benefit to just taking care of the fundamentals um which is why i, I pretty much haven't really pushed any supplements anything um at why i created the the video course the whole thing is free like a lot of the benefits that you can get from uh, erection quality sexual stamina it's all free like oh like, that's awesome we're gonna link to that in the description of the video by the way for anybody who would like to check that out um i wanted to ask you do you think that time under traction is more effective than heavier loads or do you think they go hand in hand what's your take on it yeah, so similar to what I said before, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, you can't, I don't really think you can have one uh, without the other if you want to get the most out of your time. Mm. Uh, can you have, let's say, just time and attraction with low force, more time, all day stretcher, for example? Um, sure. Uh, could you do high force, low time, just compression hanging? Probably. Um, do I think you could get more results in a safe way uh, without, you know, if you do follow the progressive overload protocol, you're you're essentially going to get to a point where you max out that one when you could have been, you know, getting a lot of volume from both. Um, okay. I, detail, I detail this in the video course, but yeah, definitely go hand in hand. Got it. And what what's your take on manuals for guys that don't want to get a device, for example? Do you think they can actually get significant size by just doing jelking exercises, assuming they do it safely? I think it is possible. Um, I've definitely heard a lot of positive results. Uh, I personally think that the results that I've gotten in their experience that has led me to come up with my principles of PE, I don't think I'd have the time and patience <laughs> for manual method. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam here, actually. I uh, just could not be stuffed. Um, so much of how I've actually created my brand, my company is for the everyday guy. Um, I want everyone to be able to get results if they want this uh, and if they want to achieve this goal. I Something I also detail out in, in the video course that even though it sounds like a lot of time, you know, I recommend compression hanging and then I recommend all day stretching. It takes up like hours. But if you do it in a very certain way, it doesn't really take up much time. Like the actual focus and attention um, in like, you know, a, a part of my day was probably like 40 to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. um but i would be under some form of traction whether it was high for low time or low for high time um it could have been up to 16 hours a day wow okay got it so you, you're saying is that you kind of get used to putting on the device taking it off in different times throughout the day it, so that it does not really take a lot of your mental power you don't feel like it's a you know, another responsibility you gotta take during the day. Hundred percent. That's it. So essentially, just to work it in. I mean, everyone's day is gonna be different, and depending on what you do for work, it's gonna like play a massive um, role as well. Like, if you're a tradie getting up and down like roofs and scaffolding, should you wear an all-day stretcher? I'm not entirely sure. Like, uh, it's de there's definitely a lot of nuances that you need to be aware of. A lot of experience that I think you need to be able to wear it safely to know and feel these new signs and symptoms that are coming up you really need to know what you know a potential blister like that is starting to come up feels like yeah uh, if you're wearing it for the first time um and you don't know you're not gonna realize that yeah that's what i always tell guys even in my course is like the first couple of weeks you basically need to debug what you're doing like because you have no idea what everything feels like you have no idea how good tension feels like you have no idea how injury being formed feels like. Um, you have no idea how to actually use the device in the proper way, believe it or not. Like it takes some time for you to understand, okay, I need to pump it that much, this amount of pressure, whether you're using Pini Master or other vacuum cups. And uh, yeah, that's why I think most guys get injured is because they want to jump right into it really quickly and start stretching for hours because they want the results yesterday. And uh, yeah, that's how... A lot of people get injured. So uh, another question, which you probably kind of already answered, there's a lot of guys that are using nose extenders, you know, the ones that are basically either with silicone or whatever they, they, they strap onto the PNS. Um, do you think those ones are dangerous? I know you mentioned that they are dangerous if, you know, depending on what the companies are recommending, some of them recommend uh, like to wear it overnight. Uh, the reason I'm asking is 
because a lot of guys apparently uh, got good results from it. Like at least they claim some of those companies have some reviews. I don't know how valid they are. Um, mm. But what's what's your take on nose extenders? I think they're really, really beneficial. I think um, I think a lot of my results and my, a lot of my results came from the benefit and the convenience of, let's say, I like to refer to them as compression extenders because, like you said before, it is compression of the tissues. Yeah. Um, that's how I differ from the two. So the extender frame is one thing. That's essentially the way that uh, you apply traction. Um, but the attachment method is either vacuum or compression. Right. Uh, so compression method or compression extender is, again, the most typical type of uh, PE device sold. Therefore, I think that just being uh, a numbers game, for lack of a better term, you have a lot more people trying it out. There is a lot more risk of people you know, seeing the dangers of what it can do, especially with the advice like we spoke about before, advice like wear it to sleep or wear it in public. It's a compression extender, compressive device, which means you need to take it off to restore blood flow again. Uh, and like you said before, most guys get excited. They probably think <laughs> logical, uh, guys being logical, they're like, it's on, traction means gains, more traction means more gains, yeah. not always. Um, and usually with compressive uh, or compression extender, the more traction you want to apply, uh, it's most likely the case that you need to tighten it even more to be able to maintain that grip, um, which I don't necessarily recommend, especially if you're just getting into it. I totally understand the excitement uh, when you get a new product, when you know, you've got this goal ahead of you that you just want to smash out the water. Um, and you definitely don't want to hear about, you know, boring things like progressive overload or, you know, take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another reason why um, I definitely recommend progressive overload, there's two main reasons. The one is to adapt and go with the flow of the fascia. Um, you want a certain response from the penile tissues, but you also want to keep up your conditioning. Conditioning is honestly one of the most important things to keep in mind. And you're going to find out real soon um where your conditioning is at if you don't pay attention to this if you just try to go balls to the wall so to speak uh yeah like the last thing you want to do is get an injury to such a sensitive area of the body and um throw on the towel and then join the rest of the industry saying it's all a sham yeah so i, I also wanted to ask you regarding because i've reviewed your previous products and uh we i just placed another order for the new extenders because i would love to also review them on my channel uh, mm -hmm. why, why did you move from the metal uh, kind of extender to mm -hmm. a more plastic-based extender? Was there, like, what was the reason behind it? Um, so I sent out surveys about two years ago. Um, I do this often. I'll, I haven't done one for a little while since I've you know, made a few more um, innovations, innovations to the, the range. But once the new product line actually comes out, um, I'll probably wait a few months, get some more feedback, send out surveys again. Um, and I just want to keep doing this, just keep iterating. And the feedback that we got back then was everyone kind of, uh, they liked the idea of our philosophies and um, principles of PE. They wanted all the devices, but they wanted it to be cheaper. Right. Um, they totally appreciated that you know our kit, even back then, was the same price as literally like one extender on the market. Um, but I guess I, I still wasn't hitting the most affordable price point for most people. So the price of the products was one um, because back then, like I was also making things with such low minimum order quantities that the price was higher, like the margins were just so much lower. Um, as well as shipping costs. So for me to actually import stock and ship out, um, I think the full kit back then was about 1.5 kilo to two kilo. So shipping stuff out from Australia to the US, like just shipping was bananas. Um, and then customers wanted to you know, get a better price on that. So uh, I wanted to make the products more affordable. So even more affordable than I'd already made them compared to the rest of the industry. Uh, but the engineering um, complexity was trying to get them a lot lighter, like way lighter, um, especially for such a comprehensive range of tools, um, which may, meant I needed to strip a lot of the metal back. Um, 
So, so much of it was experimental. I tried to utilize a lot more plastic, a lot more uh, fabrics. So from a challenge point of view, like I think it was really fun, but uh, we ran into our first hurdle when, um, I will admit, most people will underestimate the strength of plastic. Um, yeah. First and foremost, like I totally underestimated this because um, working with my first engineer, the first original compression hanger I made, I just like, I was just like, just make this fucking thing a tank. And he's like, dude, you're going way too far. Like this, this is so unnecessary. I'm like, just do it. I think if you threw it at a car, um, you know, the car would be worse off. Um, <laughs> I think just for cost sake, it was just too far. So I really wanted to dial it back, which also meant that the customer could save as well, um, get a bit more functionality as well. Um, but for a few of the products, maybe I went like a little too far into the light uh, lighter area, but I definitely managed to get the total weight where we needed to, um, especially when I didn't have the distribution center in the US. Um, so now that we've got that weight doesn't necessarily matter as much, um, but I've still managed to keep it under a kilo uh, even with the new product line coming out. So weight is still something that I, I want to keep down for the sake of importing stock and the cost of the customer. Um, but yeah, the first issue I think we ran into was the design with the extender. A lot of guys were snapping uh, the extender. So then we just had to bring in um, uh, aluminium alloy uh, component or two components, two or three components uh, just to address that issue. So I think, yeah, went way too far with the first or the original range of products, uh, try to dial it back, addressing a lot of the feedback from uh, the customers, probably dialed it back a little too far. And then, you know, we've just kind of been playing iteration uh, along the way. So it's been really good. Um, yeah, definitely not smooth sailing, but yeah, it's uh, it's been good. Yeah, but that's what matters in the long run is that you kind of hear feedback and you keep optimizing, uh, unlike, many other companies that just make a device and they just keep selling it for 20 years. Uh, actually, I'm one of the people that really appreciates the way you innovate. Uh, I, d making my own products myself, I realize how very complicated that is. You know, even, even a simple device, most people don't realize what goes into making it, or picking the proper plastic and the actual print and what the metal is made of and how it functions and all of that. So, you know, kudos to you for creating great product, in my opinion. Um, I think that is pretty much it. And by the way, we are going to be linking uh, to your website uh, for anybody who wants to check out your products in the description below this video. So if you guys want to check out Mike's um, line of products, uh, there are some new extenders that I'm going to be reviewing here on the channel. Make sure to check them out. Um, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, Mike? Um, no, I mean, I guess as the guy that is selling the devices uh, and the tools for enlargement, you'd think that I'd be, um, so far into the direction of pro size. Um, but I just want a lot of guys to know that while I do think it is really beneficial, uh, to increase pleasure in your sex life, it's not everything. Just keep that in mind. Um, I think that there are a lot of, a lot more. Um, beneficial ways to utilize your time. But if this is one of those things that you get to the point where you're like, you know, I've ticked off so many of these boxes along the way, you know, I'm really working on communication in my relationship, all the boring stuff, right? Like all the things that most guys hear that are cliche, like it's true. I just don't want you to go so heavily into this. Uh, maybe even you do achieve size, but then you realize that what we were saying all along was like fuck maybe i actually should have put a lot more time into my relationship and communication and maybe even erection quality taking care of my health going to the gym there's just so many more things you can do but if you do tick all those boxes go for it like it, it, this is such an awesome goal it's, it's honestly it's a lot of fun um and i think that i probably could have done it in a better priority in a better order um and i just want guys to know that i think it's it's definitely an avenue that you can get into. If you come at it for the wrong reasons, from the wrong approach, with the wrong intention, it's a slippery slope. Like you could just make uh, things a lot worse. Your mental, physical issues could be exacerbated. Um, and especially given this type of goal, um, you can feel quite isolated, if, especially if you're not a part of like online communities and stuff. 
Um, it's not like you can go to your neighbor, your friend, being like, oh, like, you know, what are you doing? It's not like fitness, right? Yeah. Like gym. Um, so when it's isolating, yeah, I think there is just so much uh, greater risk in injuring yourself, in uh, thinking down upon yourself. Um, just know it should be fun. You should be having a good time doing it. Um, all of it should be positive. If you're struggling to get the results you're after, either contact um, yourself or me. Um, we're definitely like, you know, figures of the industry that you know, really want guys to achieve uh, and get good results. But first and foremost, just your health and wellness is the utmost priority in all of this. Like allow size to be the last, the cherry on the top, um, because just so much more comes before it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always say that every time somebody comes to me and he's like, I'm this size, should I be doing PE or whatever? First thing I say is focus on the fundamentals. For most guys, like when they come to me and they're like, they're five inches or whatever, like they're well within average. And they say, you know, is it too small? Should I be doing PE? Like I honestly, even though I'm also selling devices, I honestly tell them, no, you should not. Because you're, you're missing on so many other points. Like you're smoking, you're drinking, you're doing this and that. Like, all of that is harming your erection. You don't know how to talk to women to begin with, let alone like pleasure them in sex. So there's so many other factors to be working on. But again, if you checked all of those and you know that you know, you're know you on a good level in every other factor, okay, might as well if you wanna you know, improve everything else. And anyways. That's yeah. also something um, that would be, I don't think a lot of guys actually, um, project into the future. So imagine if you are suffering uh, with your performance or so erection quality, stamina, maybe you even don't like, you can't talk to women or whatever. I think it's really important, especially if you have a relationship, especially long-term um, and you want to keep this type of thing up, like gaining size. Imagine how bizarre that's going to be for them if you don't communicate to them properly, but you're trying to put effort into this thing that sure is probably for you, but is also probably for them because it takes two to tango. The pleasure is for not only you, but them. Um, it's just going to be so backwards to them. Like they're almost going to be deterred um, from that uh, because <laughs> you're so out of sequence. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyways, uh, I really appreciate uh, having to talk to you, Mike. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really insightful because you have – your own approach. You've been in the industry even longer than I have. Uh, I'm sure my audience would really love uh, this interview. I really thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and uh, to spread the message. Also, uh, as I saw, you have a new YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know how active you are, but if you'd like, we can also link that below this video so you can people can check you out as well. Yeah, I kind of got paranoid from uh, getting terminated. Initially, YouTube said suspended, but it's a nice way of saying terminated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started a different brand for a different purpose, more health and wellness. Um, but I'm just, I stopped that for the time being. So right now, I'm actually not on YouTube. All of my content, um, <clears throat> the content that was on YouTube is actually on our video library. So sometimes people get confused, but our shop is totalmanshop.com, but our video library uh, and our video course the um, PE video course is all on totalmanperformance.com, all, mm -hmm. all the content. So the content that was actually from the YouTube channel, all the tutorials for all of our devices, tutorials for other devices, um, and now the video course, which has been specifically made for this video library. Uh, it's kind of like a Netflix for PE. Okay, got it. Awesome. So we'll make sure to link those down below. Anyways, uh, thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.